Hello and welcome or welcome back to Fancy a Brother podcast. I'm your host Kirsty Taylor and this week we are chatting with Scottish micro-influencer Kirsten Morrison but for now let's hop into our intro. Hello, hello, hello. How are we all doing this week? I am officially on holiday and let me just tell you it feels unreal, unmatched, unbelievable. I am recording this 24 hours before it goes out so it's very um, very on topic this time. Sometimes my intros, I always try and do my intros near the time but sometimes the interviews are a while before this time. The interview was very recent so that's good. And I am currently at my parents' house before I embark on a staycation. I'm leaving in like one hour, I think. So I have a solo staycation before heading to my favorite place in the world, Edinburgh. And then going on another solo staycation before going back to work again. And I am just so excited to have a restful and peaceful two weeks. Currently recording this in my childhood bedroom with my neighbor's cat sleeping next to me. He's just put his paw over his face because he's mad at me for talking while he's sleeping, but he'll get over it. And he's keeping my feet warm, which I appreciate, apart from I'm probably gonna get pins and needles. So yeah, those are the life updates. I'm just, I'm on a holiday, I'm excited. Um, More to come about how the holiday goes near the time. Keep an eye out, because I'm gonna try and do reels and TikToks, please. like. Bear with me, I'm not very good at these things, but I'm trying, so hopefully you get some content out of that. But my small wonder of the week this week is that autumn is finally here. I'm sorry to all the summer gals out there, but I am such an autumn person. I really love autumn and also I'm quite like winter. But I think autumn is probably my favourite season. It's just cosy season. Um, it's not too cold and you can go on these long walks and Oh, you, don't, you don't sweat like you do in summer and you wear cardigans and jumpers and have fires and oh just all the good things happen at autumn in my opinion so that is that is what I'm loving right now I'm just so happy that autumn has arrived and the hot days are behind us hopefully so what I'm engaging with is I recently picked up the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo in Tesco I did just go to get one thing and I left with three books pajamas and the one thing I went for and I just like to say like who let me do that it's because it's a big massive Tesco that I never normally have access to so I, I did pop off so I've heard incredible things about this book and I am loving it so far I will keep you updated with what I think and um, you can check follow me on Goodreads if you want to find out what I'm reading um I think it's just Kirsty Louise on Goodreads I'm not sure I'll tag my profile in the show notes because I'm officially a Goodreads author also so buy my book Turbulent 20s sorry gonna have to self-plug and also once you've read it you can say that you've read it on Goodreads leave us a little review that'd be nice um yeah so that is what I've been engaging with recently Our small business of the week is a business I found on Instagram called Karma Clay Co. And Karma is spelt with a C. And they are slow made polymer clay earrings, which are plastic free and eco friendly packaging. And they are based in Dorset, Hampshire, in the UK. You can find them on Instagram at karma.clayco and also on Etsy, which is Karma Clayco, all one word. And I am obsessed with these earrings. I'm absolutely picking myself up a pair, maybe two. I really love the terracotta goddess body earrings and also the boho moon phase earrings, but also just all of these earrings are very on trend right now. And I also feel like they're quite timeless. Um, the sunset arch earrings are stunning so you can bet your bottom dollar I will be picking up a pair for a little holiday gift to myself so I highly recommend checking them out so like I said it's karma clay co on etsy and karma dot clay co on instagram and I will have them linked in the show notes for you so now we can hop into our poem of the week my favorite segment often is our poem of the week And this week I found our poem on Instagram 
the Instagram handle is kojo underscore writes underscore stuff which I obviously will have linked in the show notes so it's a poem called five minutes of forever by kojo five minutes of forever we sat next to each other waiting for the sun to set in silence you promised me forever in chaos we waited for us to end from a lie to a memory the sun set our eyes met brimming with tears As the last drop fell, our bodies moved apart and our hands let go. So that is Five Minutes of Forever by Kojo. And like I said, I will have their Instagram account linked in the show notes for all of you to check out. And that is everything from me this week. So I don't really have many updates going on at the moment. Like I said, I'm on holiday. More to come on how my staycations go. I hope you are all enjoying the start of autumn and enjoy this incredible episode with Kirsten. It was so much fun to record. Kirsten's a great gal with lots of wonderful things to say and I'm sure you all love it. And before I go, please remember to subscribe slash follow to the podcast, follow the podcast depending on which platform you listen on and also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We love getting a good review and repost on your stories if you're listening that's such a helpful way for people to find us if you're ever listening just screenshot tag us we will always share and we appreciate it so um yeah let's hop into our chat with Kirsten So our charity of the week for this week is Engender. Engender is an anti-sexist organisation operating in Scotland and other parts of Europe. They aim to make Scotland a fairer, safer place where women can flourish and contribute to both the social and market economies with dignity, freedom and justice. If you'd like to check out Engender, you can head to www.engender.org.uk. We will also tag them in our charity spotlight for the week and on their website you can find out if they have any vacant positions the publications they're involved in who they are what they do how you can get in touch if you need help from them and who their staff are and just how you can get involved if you can donate give your time spread the word so like I said it is in (laughs) gender.org.uk So now we are going to be joined by the lovely Kirsten Morrison. Kirsten is a digital marketing student in her early 20s, navigating living alone and balancing work and study life. She has an interest in social media and shares her life and fashion on her Instagram and TikTok. Hello Kirsten and welcome to Fancy Weather podcast. It is so lovely to have you here with us today. How are you? Hello, it's good to be here. I'm good, thank you. Good, I'm glad to hear it. So we like to start off every episode by asking our guests what is their small wonder of the week. So it can be something small but it also can be something large. It's just a phrase we like to be to use so it can be anything at all that you've enjoyed recently. Um, I think probably at the beginning of the week I was actually down in Edinburgh staying mm-hmm. with some of my family um, and that's the first time I've gone to like stay with them and visit them since before the whole pandemic mm-hmm. so that was just really nice to just be able to go down and stay with them like normal. Amazing. So that, that. Yeah I love that. Um, so have you had any moments in your 20s where you have been surviving rather than thriving and how did you overcome those times? Um, yeah I would definitely say probably around like third fourth year in uni mm-hmm. a couple of years ago I kind of like got to the point where I was like I don't know what I'm doing with my degree I don't know if I like my degree mm-hmm. like I was really kind of just a bit lost um because I did so I did business management mm-hmm. and I hadn't really found my like area within business management that I was interested mm-hmm. in um and then I would say the way that I actually overcame that is 
I managed to get completely randomly, I managed to get a placement for this company called Keston, which is like a menswear clothing company mm-hmm. doing marketing because I had to find a placement um, for third year. And like, I didn't know if it was something I was going to like or anything, but then it kind of turned out that like marketing for a clothing company was what I was really interested in. So I feel like that kind of helped me overcome it because I kind of had this moment of, oh, I actually have found something that I'm interested in and that I want to do for my degree. So that definitely Amazing. helped me kind of overcome it. That's cool. I guess it's like, I'm um, also a bit of a risk to do that, but it pays off yeah. in the long run. Cause um, yeah, I, I can imagine that finding a placement is quite stressful. Yeah. I personally have never, I've never had to find, I've been <laughs> on placements, but through yeah. education so you don't uh-huh. find them they're given to you which yeah. sometimes is stressful in its own way but I can imagine that trying to find your own is really difficult I have other friends who've had to do that yeah. and it can be a bit of a struggle because it's quite yeah, a lot of competition definitely. like it's the kind of thing it's like you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it and be like I never mm-hmm. want to work on that again <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is, it is telling for sure I think it's the same in all careers when you do a placement sometimes Mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the job that you realize it's like the environment and you're like this is not the environment I want to be in so I need to Mm -hmm. find a different environment that's still this job so you're gonna switch gears just a little bit not too much but you did speak about how you were in a menswear um for your Mm -hmm. placement so when did your interest in fashion begin is that something you've always kind of been interested Mm -hmm. in or is it a more recent thing I would say probably from when I was like in high school um Mm -hmm. I kind of I definitely was like in that age range of like you know when it was all like Zoella and like everybody yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. like I definitely was in that kind of so back then I was kind of more interested in makeup and things like Mm -hmm. that but that eventually I would say when I was like 14 15 it was kind of all like the YouTube fashion and things that I started Mm -hmm. to like um and then just from there it kind of grew into just like kind of evolving into my own style and things like that over the years so yeah cool yeah I feel like that that era kind of um kind of grew up from going from Zoella to like Pinterest you know? yeah. like that was kind of like the trajectory yeah. I was like you, you started off with like Zoella and makeup tutorials mm-hmm. and then most people and I like ended up Pinterest that seems to be yeah, like the, way, the direction I ended up going in yeah. perfect so why did you choose to study digital marketing at university and why do you think digital marketing is important to every brand why do you think it's such a key part especially in today in today's day and age yeah. for a brand I think mm-hmm. personally I think that if you don't have digital marketing your brand isn't going to go yeah. very far so yeah. can you speak to why you think that is and why that was an interest and a passion yeah. for you um I guess after my placement that I mentioned like mm-hmm. a lot of it was digital and I kind of realized that that was something that I enjoyed like doing the kind of social media marketing side of it um and I also quite enjoy like website marketing and kind mm-hmm. of like like the content aspects of that like creating blogs and things like that so I just kind of it was I hadn't even really been planning on doing a master's but um it was like during the pandemic last year and I kind of was like I don't know what I'm going to do like there's not that many jobs so I just decided that I would do the master's and I thought that digital marketing was the most interesting thing to me um, and I definitely think that digital marketing is like a really important thing for companies at the moment and it's like a really like growing space like there's lots mm-hmm. of jobs there's lots going on um, and I just think it's important because it's a good way to kind of it's a way to like build your brand beyond like it like say you're like just a little like brick and mortar shop mm-hmm. like it's a way to extend your brand beyond that because you can build a, a community online and there's just so much more like opportunities for growth and everything and I also just really enjoy that it's kind of as much as it's like all quite technical and like there's a lot of strategy in it it's also a way that you can be creative within your job like for me I really enjoyed the course because it has a lot of creative work in it as well as practical work and um, so we did a lot of stuff like making like promotional videos for companies and like making websites and my dissertation nice. I actually made a website for a company That's so um, cool. yeah so I just really enjoyed this kind of like brings together like the creative side of things with like the business strategy of it mm. I think also the pandemic really brought that out because there was no other way you could yeah, not market definitely. I suppose mm-hmm. like the only other marketing that did exist was maybe like 
billboards and things like that because people were on walks but I think like the Uh digital space was kind of your only your only option in a lot of ways and you saw a lot of brands that were kind of smaller as well have to shift to digital otherwise how do you how do you sustain that when people can't leave their house yeah yeah no that's that's so interesting it's actually I always find it surreal sometimes like how much digital marketing and particularly like social media can impact Mm -hmm. something like there is a place near where I grew up um that's like a little farm shop and cafe and it is quite popular naturally but they did this um sunflower maze and Mm -hmm. um they basically posted about it not thinking it would gain that much attraction just posted about it as like a thing they didn't think it would become so big so didn't really have tickets or anything and it went viral and they they had to shut it down because it was there was too many like the roads were becoming like it's good they recognize that dangerous because of the where it is if you were to queue for it it, it's not safe because people can't you'd have to shut the road essentially but they had no idea and all because somebody like posted posted an instagram and i was like that's wild because they are just like they are a pop i wouldn't say like they're not a known cafe Mm -hmm. or anything like they are popular within the local area but people were like coming for yeah. this sunflower field and I was like that is unreal like that's, that's so mad. crazy to me so that's incredible for their business because now they yeah. recognize people know about them now mm-hmm. and next year when they do it they'll just know the scale yeah. it's going to be and they can tailor uh-huh. to that but I was like yeah. that is insane like just post one photo and it goes like that like they had no I cannot imagine like being like what the? <laughs> especially yeah. like the older people that go there because it's it, there is a lot of an mm-hmm. older customer base who go there yeah. kind of every week and it's like their local place and it's regular because it's a farm shop as well can you imagine just be like a local and being like um, yeah like is something there. going on like so I just think it's so wild the impact yeah. that digital marketing even when it's unintentional can have on a brand which is what makes social media so skill- cool but also like sometimes a little yeah, bit scary because I'm like sometimes, yeah like, you think about it because I'm there's... the safety aspect there was definitely like oh yeah shit. like yeah definitely because there's that thing at the moment as well I don't know if you'll have seen it there's this girl called Emily Mariko on TikTok mm-hmm. and she's like kind of gone viral for being like healthy and like mm-hmm. having like good healthy food and things and there's this recipe with like where she kind of makes it's like deconstructed sushi mm-hmm. um and she makes mm-hmm. it with like leftover salmon and rice and things and like puts like sriracha and mixes it all up and whatever and like the stuff like I went to buy sriracha in the supermarket the other day because I needed more and it's like sold not, out and it's like things like when these things go viral like everything in the shop like from them is gone mm-hmm. like it's crazy to think that like that impact happens like worldwide mm-hmm. like it's not like because like she's some like American YouTuber and then there's products sold out in UK supermarkets because of what she's been posting. Like, it's crazy. That is what it gets wild. I can imagine that must be hard to be in that field because it's oh, hard yeah. to recognize sometimes the impact mm-hmm. you're having entered. Like, also the pressure that comes with that must yeah. be so... Like, I think there's pressure in every job, but I think the pressure that comes with that from, like, eyes of people you don't even know. Yeah, yeah, I know it's crazy. Because it's, it, like, once you get really, really big, it kind of becomes that thing that, like, people expect. Content yes. And they, expect and they don't, they, like, kind of treat you more like a brand than a person. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's definitely. that, like, blurring line of, like, yeah. is Anna, Emma Chamberlain is still a person, but some people, mm-hmm. they don't recognize that. Yeah, they exactly. see her as this brand. And of Uh course, like that is how she makes her money. But it's like, you don't get that in any other job. Like I can go home from my job in a school and I am no longer like, yes, granted, I can get it on a smaller scale. Like if I'm at the supermarket Mm -hmm. and I meet a pair, but I know who's coming up to me. Like with the pandemic, I don't really, but normally I would know (laughs) who it is Uh like talking to me. Whereas on that scale, you don't know. You don't know who this is. And that's, that is, Yeah. So yeah. um, have you always been interested in photography or is it something that you've more recently kind of started to enjoy or did it come like when Instagram became a thing or how did it all come about? Um, I think from probably from like when Instagram and things came mm-hmm. around, 
that's when I started to kind of get into it but it was more kind of just like taking photos of my phone and things like that um but in was it during lockdown last year yeah during lockdown last year I, mm-hmm. well that was actually no just before the lockdown at the beginning of this year um mm-hmm. I got a camera for Christmas and um, like a proper like wireless yeah. camera um so that's kind of I kind of got into it I well I wanted that camera because I was like I think that I want to like properly get into photography so yeah it kind of always kind of been interested in it but more in so in the last year um, and I got a film camera as well actually recently which has been nice. good fun as well they're always fun to kind of yeah I really enjoy <laughs> that because like you just like you don't know what the photo is going to look like until you get it developed um, yeah but yeah no I kind of I just I just like taking photos of things like I'm not really too fussed about like editing a lot or mm-hmm. whatever but I just like having photos of things to remember like so I can look back on them and be like oh this is what nice. I was doing yeah it's yeah. cool yeah I love film photography it's just so yeah, expensive is the only thing oh, I find oh. it's like you have to find find the right place that it's not going to cost you like and even then it's not it's still going to cost you a decent amount yeah. it's the hardest oh. thing it I is know, definitely like price, not the cheapest. Yeah, like the price of films gone up so much as well mm-hmm. recently. I think just because like everyone's getting interested in it. Yeah, because I interested. got big into film photography over lockdown because I had a lot more free time. Like I'll be honest, like since I've started work the last mm-hmm. time officially on holiday as of today, but so I like oh, I'm very exciting. The fir- mm-hmm. like this is my first term working as a teacher and I honestly have taken one photo on my phone in the last <laughs> eight weeks because I'm just so busy and like I don't yeah. work in a job where I would ever have my phone out within uh-huh. the school yeah. day so mm-hmm. it's just like adjust it and it's so bizarre because at uni that like I take so many more photos yeah. and I'm sure I will get back into it but it's like mm-hmm. when you get to that busy season but in yeah. lockdown I had a film camera and I still have like eight rolls of film that I need mm-hmm. to develop but it's just I haven't found the time and they're probably like yeah. that's exciting though because I'm like when I finally develop these yeah. like I have no idea what's on yeah, any what's of them anymore them. I'm like oh yeah. it'd, be, it'd be interesting to see like what is on them but no, I, I think film photography just has like a certain edge to it that you just don't yeah. get with anything else because there's this ability to not overthink because you can't, yeah. because yeah, it's a waste. There's no point. And I, I'm not such a fan of the ones that are kind of a cross between digital and film where you can see yeah. it for it because like, it takes away the fun. That takes away yeah, the magic, yeah, like, ruins it. Because mm-hmm. I have some film photos like, which were ruined, but they kind of look nice. That they were, like yeah. the way that they were ruined, the light actually looks cool and it looks interesting mm-hmm. and it looks like it was intentional and it wasn't. Yeah. So I think that that is one of the things about film that's magical because mm-hmm. now it's so easy to like have digital waste where we're just constantly yeah. like taking oh, a million yeah. photos so of things. That. Like I have my like burst shutter on and I'm like, just, like yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know it's nice. It's hard I'm, though. Like, film photos to kind of like just think about it a, li- a little bit less yeah amazing well on that note you are one of the queens of pick dumping like one of my favorite people for doing that um oh, what is your favorite thing about pick dumping like what do you love so much about just doing that and for people who don't know you should probably like picture it's just like where you post a bunch of pictures without really thinking and mm-hmm. editing it you just kind of put them out into the world and leave it and it's like a a scroll through on Instagram it's not like a one square shot and it's normally on your feed yeah yeah I I don't know I kind of I feel like I started doing it in the last like year or so I feel mm-hmm. like it's just a nice way to kind of share a lot of photos in a kind of casual way because I feel like a lot of the time Instagram like has become very kind of everything's perfectly posed or mm-hmm. and like everyone has like their like perfectly like aesthetic the feeds and I kind of just like that pick dumping you can just kind of put random photos because half of them don't really show up on your like on the front of your feed and it's just a nice way to kind of like share kind of like random stuff about your life and like mm-hmm. random photos without really thinking about it so yeah nice yeah it adds that personal edge that sometimes is lacking if everything is very yeah. like superimposed or mm-hmm. posed for or like they've gone to the effort of getting a studio and doing all these things which do look cool but Uh there there's like a loss of connection sometimes with that because it's not relatable anymore Mm -hmm. when you see like people going to do these shoots and taking like three hours to do them and you're like that's not relatable to the everyday 
person yeah, like, doesn't have that like type. It's just like I'm posting photos from like what I'm actually doing and like mm-hmm. what's actually happening in my life rather than just posting like an outfit photo which I do like to post but yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it's just nice to kind of mix it up every so yeah, often so. for sure to have some variety so you do so talking about outfit photos you do manage to take incredible photos around Aberdeen of your outfits so do you use a tripod or do you ask a friend to help like what is your go-to um I most of the time use a tripod and I have a little like bluetooth remote yeah. so I can just hold that in my hand or sometimes I get my sister to help me um, she lives not far from me so I'll get her to help me but yeah mostly I just take them myself I kind of find it easier to take photos myself because I yeah. like I, just, I don't really like other people taking my photos so when I take it myself I feel like I'm more comfortable in front of the camera so yeah yeah no I get that I literally asked my parents to take one at dinner the other day and it was at the point where they turned it to be like I made it like front facing and I just mm-hmm. my mom just held the camera so they basically <laughs> were just a tripod yeah. and my dad just had to press the button so <laughs> they, they didn't even see what they were taking because I was yeah. like these the ones that you're taking they're just it's not it no, it's I not think, working um, for me about parents that like any photo oh it's nice like my, parents, like my parents both have like good phones with good cameras but any photo they take I'm like I don't look like that surely <laughs> yeah and it's like right. because they're your parents they think that every photo well not every but most yeah. photos of you look nice. nice photo yeah. oh yeah and they'll be oh, like oh my so god nice. that's like, so nice I'm like <laughs> are we looking at the same thing <laughs> did I miss something here yeah. but it's interesting I suppose because that does happen with friends sometimes as well mm-hmm. they'll be like oh, yeah that's a great photo of you I'm like is it heck like, what is nice about that? Yeah. so where is your favorite place in Aberdeen to get an outfit picked do you have like top places that you like to go mm-hmm. that aren't like too busy because that's like a thing for me I'm always like oh I don't want like a lot of people walking past yeah I quite like the beach but it's mm. something that like if I was getting a photo at the beach I would get somebody I would get like my sister yeah. to take it for me because there's always a lot of people and yeah can, I don't want to like set up my tripod and have everybody looking at me um and then there's a couple places around, like, I'm trying to remember what the street's called. I'm so bad for in Aberdeen. I, because I've lived, like, because I'm from here, I don't know any of the street names. There's nowhere. Oh, I is. relate. Um, <laughs> there's like, a, oh, what is it called? I think it's called like Union Plaza. It's like these like okay. kind of new ish offices. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and like they're normally quite quiet at the moment because like nobody's in the offices and it's oh just, of course like, perfect kind of like plain <laughs> black and white buildings and things so it's quite a good background for stuff so yeah nice. those places. it then, is funny though um, when you live somewhere you never know yeah I just, the like, only street name I know <laughs> from like my childhood is like my mine yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I lived in a yeah. village like there wasn't that many streets mm. But unless like my friend lived on it, like because when you were really young, you needed to know because yeah. I needed to know like their house numbers at that point. But like I live in, in a new place now and I couldn't tell you the name of any yeah. street but my own. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, well. I'm definitely the same. Like you just don't, you just forget. I think it's like a generation <laughs> thing. Like I think it's like um, my parents are big on like street names and stuff. For me, it's about like things like yeah. where things are yeah remember like that like specific building or like yes like, the or that like there, that bar like, or that shop or something yeah. you can see but I am bad at doing that with like people's houses but then when I'm like explaining it to someone else I'm like oh you yeah. don't know that person so yeah, like, like you don't know where their house is yeah yeah like, I my house there but I couldn't tell you where it is <laughs> yeah I'm like oh take a yeah. left past like Ailey's house and then a right past mm-hmm. Jordan's house and I'm like oh wait yeah. never mind <laughs> that doesn't yeah. make sense to you so it is interesting <laughs> no but that's that's amazing so how did your partnership with Majuri begin and okay. what advice would you give to people listening who are interested in creating partnerships with brands like Majuri cool um so basically I was given a necklace and a bracelet from my auntie and uncle actually last year mm-hmm. graduating that was from Majuri um and like when I got it I was like I just posted a photo and had tagged because mm-hmm. I quite what I normally do when I'm like wearing a brand is I'll tag the brand yeah. in the photo um and it just happened by chance that they must have liked the photo and must have seen it somehow from me tagging it and um they sent me an email asking if they could send me something and then all I had to do was just post an Instagram photo of it 
and so that was that was about a year ago now and then that kind of kept going over a couple months and then they've just recently asked me to be part of the fine crew which is Mm -hmm. where I can now get commission I have like a little link so if people Mm -hmm. buy from me there's like a then I get like a 10% um, okay like and then the people buying from the link also get 10% off their first purchase as well um so yeah it just kind of came about very randomly really um from me tagging them like when the email came through I was like is this real is this <laughs> a joke like, yeah I was like I was like um should I actually click on the link in the email or is it gonna oh, be oh yeah <laughs> is it gonna be a virus yeah but um no it was just it was just really cool like um like I don't really have like I don't have that many followers on Instagram so I was kind of mm-hmm. surprised I think they they've recently started doing like micro influencers mm-hmm. over like they still have their like bigger people but they've yeah. kind of started the micro influencer program um so I would say like for people who are interested in doing stuff like that like um they actually have I think they have a thing on your web on their website where you can actually sign up for it like you can submit a little application oh, cool and um, I know that other brands like Monica Vinader have that as well mm-hmm. so it doesn't eat like you don't have to have products from them already like you can just kind of Mm -hmm. I think you just kind of need to be like there's a lot of hashtags that people kind of use like things like hashtag discover under 5k and stuff like that and where like these brands are going to find small um, Mm -hmm. accounts because like the micro influencer thing is definitely beneficial for brands because I feel like people um like people less and less are following like these huge big accounts and they're more yeah. like follow people with less following who they kind of have more trust in because it's more kind of relatable and relatable and you kind of feel like you know the people more because it's not like just this big account where you don't get much mm-hmm. interaction with the actual person but no it's it was it's really cool like I just when when it came through I was like oh my god like <laughs> oh. and like no, it's, that's so it's cool. a that, like I followed for a long time as well mm-hmm. because um like I've seen them all over YouTube, like on people like like Lizzie Hadfield, I don't know if you mm-hmm. know her, um, and like Tarmar and people like that. Mm-hmm. Like I've always seen them doing like their majority stuff. So I'm like, when I got the email, I was like, oh my God, like this is a cool brand that like people that I follow are getting sent stuff by as well. So no, it was cool. Amazing. Yeah, I think micro influencing has definitely taken off a lot recently because yeah. the brand partnership thing, it feel it feels too much like an advert from oh, yeah. bigger, bigger people now especially because often which I get it they're trying to pay their bills but often the brands that they advertise are in competition with each other and it's yeah. like at one point they're supporting this jewelry brand and then all of a sudden they're supporting another one and they're both the best jewelry brands ever and it just yeah. feels a bit sometimes it feels a bit like inauthentic because it's like well why would you whereas if you're a micro influencer and that's not necessarily your full-time job yeah there's less pressure on getting that deal because you that doesn't pay your bills yeah that is not responsible for your yeah like for me it's just like it's a nice brand like I really Mm -hmm. appreciate that they're sending me stuff like that's amazing and Mm -hmm. I want to share because like I really like the brand like it's not like I'm not being paid like yeah you know exactly down the line I could get to the point if my Instagram was to grow where I could be getting paid but for me it's like started from that like I like the brand I had stuff from them Mm -hmm. kind of going from there exactly I think like the bigger accounts you never know like you you would hope like I hope that most of the people that I follow like it is legitimate Mm -hmm. that they like all the brands but you just you just never know yeah and I think also if they're having a hard quarter it's kind of like you have an option like yeah <laughs> you, you need to pay your rent that month and yeah maybe you had like 10 brand deals before and maybe you weren't smart with your budgeting and you don't have the money for rent so yeah. it, because, it, because it is such a different world than like a monthly yeah. salary I can imagine yeah. I kind of feel the same with acting like so many actors take jobs that yeah. they for films that they don't like yeah. and yeah. will admit <laughs> to that when they're a lot bigger mm-hmm. but they do it at the time because they need to eat and I, yeah, it's, exactly. it is like it's understandable yeah because you think well I get that you have to pay your uh-huh. bills but that for me was a big reason why because for a while I wanted to act professionally yeah. uh-huh. and that was a reason for me why I was like I don't think this is what I want to do full time yeah. because I don't want to do things I don't like don't like not that I love every yeah. aspect of my job but I don't yeah. regret it I'm not yeah. like oh god I had that terrible film I like that doesn't exist in the 
field yeah, that I'm in exactly. and there's a stability. And I think yeah. it is that thing where people talk so much about having the dream job and the dream life. And it's just like, it's not practical because there's so yeah. much of a nightmare before you get to the dream. Uh-huh. And if, and sometimes you just, do, I just, stability just sounds so much nicer than it did when I was a kid. And I'm like, yeah. I, oh, it's definitely. nice to be able to eat every day mm-hmm. and be able yeah. to pay my bills every month. Mm-hmm. And I just like, I, as much as like, maybe people would say, well, you don't have the passion for that, that someone else does. I think for me, it was just about like, I don't want to be as broke as I was in uni again. Oh yeah. No, like, I completely understand I've just that. been like, there just, and done that. Yeah. Like it, we, it's like, it would be nice to have the dream and hope, yeah. you hope that you eventually might get there, but like, it's just good to have like just a steady pra- job. Yeah. And be practicality and, like, does matter yeah. like money doesn't buy happiness but does buy stability yeah like, I'm sorry <laughs> but it does that's the reality yeah. and I think that's something that we don't teach enough of uh-huh. and that's why there is such a push for like the dream job and no yeah. job is ever gonna be perfect because it's a job and that's how yeah, you have exactly. to view it like yeah. at the end of the day it's a job it's not your mm-hmm. life and yeah. that's I suppose is where the problem comes with the social media world when does their yeah. job end and their life start because uh-huh. I oh, can't definitely. imagine because that's hard enough working from home so I yeah don't know how you like, do that I, I don't understand how people like switch off from work and things like mm-hmm. that because like for me like I'll get home from work and I'll scroll on my phone and scroll through Instagram scroll through TikTok but for them like their work is doing that yes so, exactly like, how do you how do you like differentiate from that mm-hmm. like it just it seems crazy definitely so who or not who where are your favorite places to shop at the moment and what is now that we're entering autumn what is your go-to autumnal outfit like what's your what's your kind of top pieces for autumn um my favorite places to shop at the moment I quite like H&M at the moment Mm -hmm. Um, they've got a lot of nice stuff and where else I was actually when I was in Edinburgh at the beginning of the week I went Mm -hmm. to Stradivarius um, oh, nice. and Bershka in the St. James Centre and they have mm-hmm. a lot of nice stuff and um, also really like and other stories it mm. is a little bit expensive for mm. me <laughs> moment, but, I, but I really like their stuff right now um, and also like cause and places like that as well like they just have nice kind of like nice cut jumpers mm-hmm. and like trousers and things like that um, and I would say I go to autumn fit I would say probably like either jeans or mm-hmm. like a straight leg jean or like a straight leg trouser with like a big oversized knitted jumper um and I recently got Doc Martin loafers so nice. definitely them I literally <laughs> since I've got them, I like haven't taken them off they did make me <laughs> a couple weeks but they are worth it they are literally the best shoes um, and then like I like a trench coat for autumn mm. with like not too hot not too cold kind of jacket so yeah definitely, yes like, a big jumper and a trench coat and jeans amazing and that and sounds like a little, like a... Bit, little bit preppy but I like that kind That's of style. okay <laughs> nothing wrong with a little bit of prep never hurt yeah. anyone <laughs> <laughs> perfect so what are some of your thriving moments from your 20s so far Ooh. um I would say finishing uni definitely Mm -hmm. finishing both my degrees but definitely finishing my master's because like doing the dissertation over summer was just Mm. (laughs) I feel like I feel like summer didn't happen I feel like the last couple months I just sat in here at my desk like working away so Mm -hmm. it's just so good to finally be finished like it's kind of I like if I think if third year me had seen had been able to see that I was going to like do this master's and get it done she would have been like no that's a different person <laughs> um, so like I'm just really proud of myself for actually finishing it and getting it done um and then what else would I say is another thriving moment um I think definitely my placement at the brand was mm-hmm. a really good job and it kind of made me realize like what I want to do um and I also actually did an internship for a jewelry company based in Aberdeen at the beginning of the year. Um, and it was kind of, it was just for a month. And I did mm-hmm. like, I like created a whole like digital marketing strategy for them. And um, oh. I worked with another girl on my course as well. And we kind of like did an overhaul of all the like digital stuff for them. Mm-hmm. And it was just 
like it was kind of a moment where I was like oh like I know what I'm doing like I, yeah. <laughs> we kind of did all this stuff for the brand and the woman who who was like who owned the brand like didn't really have much experience in like with the digital marketing or marketing aspect of it so it was just like a really nice moment where it was kind of like I was able to help somebody with my knowledge mm-hmm. and it kind of made me realize that like I kind of like the stuff I've been learning at uni has actually like stuck in so it was just a nice moment because it made me realize like I'm I I know I know my stuff (laughs) (laughs) like I've managed to help this woman and like help her brand and like we've like um got her like quite a bit of growth on social media and stuff since then amazing perfect definitely thriving moments yeah if you had to sum up your 20s so far in three words what would they be oh um I would say oh that's kind of difficult um I would say tiring (laughs) it's like it's a common one (laughs) but also fun and exciting nice good combo um so a little bit of rapid fire what is your go-to drink at the moment oh um I would say oh we've been having at work they've got new it's like porter's orchard gin oh um and that with tonic very good (laughs) Um, it's kind of like like apple flavor okay also kind of like a bit more autumn-y kind of it's very nice nice. um your favorite book right now um oh I'm reading one called I think it's this lovely city it's about um the Windrush generation in London and it's like a kind of story coming Mm. over it's really really good and then your favorite podcast right now Anna Chamberlain it's always <laughs> I love her podcast so much perfect sunrise or sunset Ooh, sunset gold or silver jewelry mm, silver um summer or autumn summer and then a selfie or outfit pick um outfit pick nice so just finally where can our listeners find you um so on instagram i am at underscore underscore k-i-r-s-t-n and then mm-hmm. it's the same on tiktok as well um perfect. and i think do i have anywhere else yeah just those two <laughs> <laughs> perfect and i'll link those in the show notes along with your majority cool I do actually have a website as well but it's not live at the moment but it's meant to be it should be going live in like the next month or so and it's just the same it doesn't have the underscore but it's just Kirsten without the e as well so amazing and then finally we like to ask every week what have you been engaging with recently so it can be a podcast a book an exercise class a breathing technique like anything at all that you've been (laughs) loving recently um oh have I been loving I actually watched like all of you know sex education on Netflix yes I just finished it yesterday (laughs) yeah I watched all of that in like two days um nice and I just like it's such a good program I just think it's so it's so funny and it's so well written but it's also Mm -hmm. so educational as well so good anything that like you just think it'll be so good for people who are like age like 15 16 like just starting to learn about things like that like it's such a good way to kind of make conversations mm-hmm. about sex like less taboo and things like that so I think it's such a good show like I just it's so good. definitely I completely agree it's like my top tier of shows yeah. well thank you so much for coming on this week Kirsten and like I said for everyone at home everything will be linked in the show notes so you can check out Kirsten's Instagram her TikTok and you can also check out Majuri and get 10% off which is an amazing offer so I definitely jump on that um, yeah, so thank you so much for listening, everyone. And thank have a you good so week. much for having me. Of course. Thank you. Bye. That is the end of this week's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. To keep up with all things fab, you can head to our Instagram at Fancy of Leather, check out our website, fancyofleather.com and head to our Facebook group, muddling through our 20s Fancy of Leather listeners. All of these will be linked in the show notes, as always, along with everything that Kirsten has spoken about today. 
and we hope to be joined by you next week as well for an episode with Naomi for a small talk episode so have a good week everyone and you'll hear from me next week bye